so we have now um, strong leadership. We have already treated servant leadership, and today we are now going on strong leadership. How do you know if you are a strong leader? What is a good leader? A good leader can't get too far ahead of his followers. As said by Frank Roosevelt, a good leader can't get too far ahead of his followers. It, it, it's uh, something that is pregnant with meaning, but uh, they, they explain it further. They say, just look over your shoulder at the tens or hundreds or thousands of people who are following some of your ideas or values or your goals or life targets not primarily because of some organizational role or job title but simply because of the nature of who you are the values you have the vision you hold the friendship you have and what you mean to those people's lives in other words what he's saying is that a, a leader when, when he looks back he, let me say a general in a, in, a, in a military general and leading his, his uh, people to war. It, it, the people that are following you, they are not following because he's a lieutenant general or he's a major general, he's the next in rank to you, all right? Yeah. But because they are following you because they are ready to die with you, they are ready to die for you. Because even even you don't even know who's your, your lieutenant from your from your sergeant. Because you're, you're even your, your own sergeant is right behind you, yeah. ready to say, oh God, let us go. You know, and so, so that is what this guy is saying here, that look you know, over your shoulders at the tens and thousands of people that, who are following you. So it's not because of organization, it's not because of your, your it's not because of uh, how the, the, the position have been, have been uh, um, organized, that this, this is the boss, this is the assistant boss, this is the, this is the next thing of the command. No, everybody is just following because they are following because of that in that area. And, and, and that's the same kind of a leadership that um, King David enjoyed. You see, most leadership is by example. And the effect of example can be very enduring. Depending on your stage in life, your greatest leadership influence may now be through the lives of all those you influenced, all those who you mentored, all those who you encouraged and taught some years ago. That is why leadership influence can span several generations commonly seen in families but also in all long-term organizations what do you see when i hear corporate leaders refer to values as soft issues i wonder what they regard as hard issues mm -hmm. in my experience cultural beliefs are the heart and soul of all business matters more than heroic working hours more than pay incentives Certainly, more than strategy alone, sheer beliefs, values can be the key to unleashing the talents of all the people in an organization. The former CEO of Elilili, Randy Tobias, listed 10 steps to powerful leadership. Want to lead more powerfully. Say, let your passion show, which is number one. Let your passion show. Be the person you know you were made to be have the courage of your convictions focus on things that are important to you and to others decide to make a significant difference dump trivial and unimportant things go for it with all your heart and mind live just as you want others to live show people how you are going to build a better world with or without their help and get on with making it a reality have fun now <clears throat> why should people follow you people will only follow you if they see you are ahead you are convinced you know the route you trust you and want to get there too <clears throat> leaders have to prove they <clears throat> are worth following so so which means that it, 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 it's not easy to be a leader because before you now take the leadership role, you, you must, you must, you, 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 you must uh, have that confidence in you. You, you, know, you know what you are doing, you know where you are going, and people will follow you because there's a crisis in leadership today. 
because men is up, many no longer trust those in authority their integrity their vision or their wisdom that's why character is fundamental to all successful leadership consistency honesty willingness to admit the truth even when embarrassing or humiliating it is not enough to be liked or attractive or a powerful speaker who can touch mind and emotion leaders need to be more than that if they are to survive close scrutiny and criticism within every strong leader there is an unshakable inner conviction of the rightness of their cause matched by bold commitment to the way ahead tempered by sound judgment strong leadership def defies those around to challenge the vision strong leadership is like a magnetic force drawing people and resources into action the leader is always more effective with he with, with when when he gets credit when he gets the relevant people to buy into his proposals the leader uses his interpersonal skills to excite his people and helps them to see how they may themselves benefit from both the journey and the arrival. He helps them to see the world made flesh. For a vision to guide a team or organization, it must be a compelling story, one that portrays real events, real people achieving a better tomorrow. The tools of leadership he described the essence of leadership as vision plus inspiration and momentum so leadership are always one so what is strong mean strong means for s is a self-awareness which is self-aware identity means target driven arrow means relationship hungry o means organization influence n means neighborhood linked and g means globally concerned mm -hmm. self-aware all strong leaders know their own strengths and weaknesses they know their limitations and what complementary skills they need in their teams to work most effectively they are humble teachable and quick to defer what is more they listen to the voice within to their own thoughts and values about what really matters they are sensitive to their own conscience as a higher principle and use this guide as a check against every action they may be about to take, even where it appears to be permissible in law and acceptable generally. So now in this one, Pastor Mana, you, you have already shown us example of precipitating uh, small characteristics. Is, is it inborn in you or, or you acquire it over some time or, or, or why is it difficult for other people to do so? I don't, I don't think I was born with it. No, <laughs> the, no, no I don't no. think no. Because mm. I definitely know that because I was a very shy person okay. and I didn't like being around people because no. I had skin disease, so I was very shy. Okay. And also I kept myself to myself. The only thing I did I enjoyed doing was, you know, my father and I going out doing preaching door to door. That's the only thing. But I didn't have school friends, I didn't play football as a kid, I didn't you know, so those things like you do as a mm. kid even exhibiting some leadership skill like you're leading a team or doing sports i never did any of those mm. you know so it was just through my own study and ambition to just because i just when i got to england i wanted to be wealthy That's right. so i started reading books on how to make create wealth on how to develop myself so i read a lot of personal development books That's right. yeah so yeah but no i wasn't born you know, far from it mm. Power car. Yeah. Sometimes you become uh, <coughs> intolerant to some stupidity people. Um, what makes you feel that you cannot tolerate stupidity in people or, or, or be tolerant in you? Sometimes you just quit, you just leave straight people. What do you think uh, could be the reason for it? Is it because you've been frustrated by people in long, you, you've tolerated people enough that you, you just feel that enough is enough? Or, 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 or what can we say? Can you explain to us? It, it depends on the and the type right? of uh, and the situation. Yes. Mm. Mm. But sometimes you learn too from them about things they are doing 
which perhaps they are not aware they are doing wrong. Okay. So as a leader, that's your time to pick on those things and direct them that, don't you think this one you are doing is not correct? Okay. Why can't you do it this way? This way. Yeah. You use the opportunity to correct them. Yeah. I yeah. see. So then the, tar- <coughs> the, then the, T, the tar- T means target driven. Strong leaders are driven by more than vague vision. They aim for clear targets, practical, achievable goals which inspire teams to great things. They aim for clear targets, practical targets, achievable goals, not not uh, <coughs> not uh, dreaming, daydreaming goals or, or unattainable goals that God will make it or God will do it. They are passionate about the higher purpose of all they do and how each target fulfills their big mission. Now, Robert uh, Kaplan and David Norton developed the idea of a plane cockpit in their book, The Balanced Scoreboard, proposing new dials and instruments to provide ongoing feedback to business leaders about many different uh, parts in the, of their business. The scoreboard has a revolutionary target setting in many corporations, but as the authors point out, the four parts of the scoreboard can be a string jacket and may need rebalancing financial, customer, internal businesses, processes and land growth with softer variables such as employee satisfaction and community involvement. Hmm. Now, if any one idea about leadership has, in, has inspired organizations for thousands of years, is the capacity to hold a sheer picture of the future we seek to create. We are in this situation thus. Um, the spirit comes the holy spirit comes in in other words we are saying is that this this is this this is based on human on human ability without without putting the 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 the, the, the contribution of the holy spirit into it so 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 in other words, what we are saying is that it is that with god everything is possible yes. all right so, so so that which means that as christian leader we we must still have our 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 dependency on christ that that uh, even though all these things may be may be impossible because one thing is you are planning a goal you are planning a target <coughs> and, and, and then you are now uh, 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 putting your, your strategy on the financial the customer the internal business the process and and then and all these things the uh, employee satisfaction community involvement community involvement you, you may even distribute pamphlets all over the whole country for for evangelism if nobody comes to the church what are you going to do not that you didn't make any effort to, to print out, you know, but without Christ in, uh, convicting them, you cannot do anything. So, so, that, so, that, so that this is what we are now saying, that strong leaders do it together. For them, relationship with men and women, they can trust are absolute importance. They spend time investing in key people, mentoring, coaching, encouraging, releasing, and equipping. This question again, I've already seen it in, in Mount Zion Church. Pastor Mana, where did you learn that uh, ethics that you have to invest in key people, mentoring them, equipping them? Because you have seen all these equipments, all these things. Uh, you, you know, you do it. I don't see it in, in some churches too. You know, I don't see it in some churches, but you are ready to spend that money to equip somebody like you are, you are, you are, you are, you are investing in them. Whether they, whether they, they, they show returns, they don't show returns, does it really bother you? Do, do you think that suppose this person is that disappoints me and I'm going to supply all this material for him? And this, do, do you really think about disappointment or failure or, or you just feel well, this person has seen some good qualities in him. Let me encourage him. Let me invest in him. Let me spend money in training, in, in training them, in, in sending them for training, sending them to, to overseas, sending them to this. We are investing in them. Suppose we invest there and then they become qualified and then they leave. Do, 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 do leaders have to think that, suppose they leave me or leaders don't even bother to think at all that they will not leave. But let me just do what, what comes to my mind. Or, or, or what do you think is the, the, the approach to it? That's a loaded question. I know, but, uh, I know. I know <laughs> but and I mean, going back to your yeah. going back to your your mm. your, your, your note. Yeah. You said in the, I think it was in the first one, you mm. said that um if you are leading people just look behind you and how far mm. they are. 
you can't lead people if you don't bring them and share the vision and embrace them and work and invest in them because they are the the the, the assets of the organization That's right. in terms of whether you're going to be afraid of people are going to leave you or not yes i used to be worried about that i used to have sleepless night for many many years mm -hmm. over that and um it was it was tough but what i've come to learn over over the last I would say 24 months or, or so is that when you are a leader or especially a pastor there's something you, you got to understand that the people are not your people That's right. they are god's people you don't have control over them you invest in them because there are going to be three types of there are three types of people in the church That's there right. are people who you would train you invest in them and they would come and say well pastor i've served my time god has called me to go and they'll go peacefully not open a mount zion fellowship church yeah. go and open their own church yeah and, 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 and pray, praise god it's the kingdom of god expanding That's right. as long as you don't we'll work together That's right. and we'll do things together i'll support you even if it's not a mount zion fellowship church That's right. there are people who would come they'll use you they'll do everything you invest in them you know and um they will break away hmm. and do something horrible right. and they would go they go yes and those who would come and they're loyal and you invest in them and they will say you know what i want to go and start a mount zion somewhere and they take they work with you and they go and start a mount zion somewhere. somewhere so once you come to realize these three types of people in your organization mm -hmm. you have a you have a good sleep at night That's right. because nothing surprises you mm -hmm. anymore nothing shocks you anymore That's right. but it takes several blows <laughs> to get there right. and Papa Khan knows what I'm talking about <laughs> he's been there a lot with me from day one we'll he's seen what has happened That's right. you know so it just gets to that place now where I'm not afraid I'll invest in you because if you go out and you do a great job That's right. even if you break away but you do a great job hey to God be the glory That's today right. I got a call from one of my first past assistant pastor ordained That's right. in this church he mm. called me today just before I got here, That's right. Pastor Man, I'm just calling to say hello. I want you to come and preach in my church one day. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I just want to say I appreciate you. And he just started, you know. Yes, right. Yeah. But he, he broke away in 2013, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that's right. That was five years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so you, you just have to come to that place, Pastor Lambo. You come to times. Yes. And say, you know, you develop people, they go, they start something. If it's great, it's good. If they, you know, and, and that's the place I've come to in Mount Zion for to be working yeah, with God. Yeah, there, there shouldn't be. Otherwise, you, you're going to die before your time. That is true. You know, <laughs> that if you have so many enemies. Yes, you're going to die before your time. Don't no think I keep saying my, church will not break my marriage. That's church, right. church is not going to make me die before my time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true because when you die, the church will continue. The church will continue. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so you know. That's, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So strong leaders are always open and sensitive to those they are seeking to date. They consult before they commit. <coughs> they listen before they leap. They ask before they advance. They make themselves accountable to those they seek to serve in their leadership. Do we have that kind of leader today in our political arena? Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Strong leaders are always mm -hmm. open and sensitive to those they mm -hmm. are seeking to date. They consult before they commit, before they give orders, before they sign executive order. They listen before they leap. They ask before they advance. They make themselves accountable to those they seek to serve in their leadership. I think this is one of the reasons why you created the the words of for the um, strategic leadership in the church, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and also, Pastor Lambo, mm. when, when you're a leader, and you are leading people you know you, you you want them to take ownership that's right if i'm running late for church i'll call power worker. i mean he's sitting here that's right and let him now run a date for church because i know he's here i will call pastor james i'll call power worker. that's right and uh, i may call pastor just to let you know if there's something you know yeah. but his power will be expecting me and say but he's pastor man and stay because he knows i will be here at such a certain time that's right. so if he doesn't if he doesn't hear from me then you know something's wrong so i always call him that's right and let him know I always tell all my leaders what I'm doing. I consult with them. That's right. If I, you know, because I never do things more. I'll call everybody one on one on the phone and I say, this is the situation. How do you think we'll deal with it? Before even we all get together That's right. and talk about it? Because 
-hmm. That way, you didn't need that. You got your back covered. Mm -hmm. and, and let me give an example. You know, there was, you know, you know, about 18 months or so, there was a rumor going on about me mm -hmm. that I wrote a letter in a, against a particular, you know, preacher yeah. stopping him from coming to the United States. Okay. Of course, I never did that. I don't even know how to construct such a letter, <laughs> you know. But um, we went to... And Mary was the first person who asked mm. me, and I was surprised. I said, what are you talking about? And all she says is, "Praise God." Wow. The second person who came to me said, "Pastor Mana was Elder Ben." Mm -hmm. He said, "Pastor Mana, this is what I heard that you wrote a letter, you know, saying that my pastor should never come to the United States." He said, "But I told the person that you will never do that." That's right. He said, "I told him I'll bet my life that you didn't do that." So I said, well, "Why did you say that, Elder Ben?" Because I asked him the question. Of course. He said, "I bet my life that Pastor Mana didn't do that." I said, why did you say that? He said, because you've never done anything without us knowing. Wow. <laughs> it's a, it's a yes. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, you've never done anything, anything without us knowing. Wow. So I know you didn't do it. I said, you're right. I didn't do it. So it's, it's good to always talk to people. Talk to people. The answer, look, this X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. But what can I will talk on certain issues? I'll talk to you. Uh, you know, mm. because it's good because you don't. I mean, it's like the other day. Establishes your credibility. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. the other day when you know on the news we were talking about previous presidents. Yeah, that's right. Who would all like Obama? They said he always consulted like President Bush Senior. Yeah. And yeah. said, look, you know, how this situation, how would you deal with it? What did you have done? How that's why the fact that they are from they're, they're different. different. Yeah. Different but but houses. he's been in that office. Yeah. So he knows. He knows. And even um, you know, people are consulting with Clinton. Clinton consulted with Nixon and, and Nixon, all these yeah. people. Yeah. Okay. Even though the, the party yeah, is out because yeah. you are in that office, yes. so they, they you know they know you've been through that issue. So they, right. so they were just looking at the present president who doesn't have anybody to consult with. At all. So so it's, it is important for you to always consult and get and somebody. Get Even himself. the Bible says that you know, that yeah, yeah, wisdom, yeah, yeah, wisdom. Yeah, get, yeah, get counseling yeah, yeah, two yeah, or three yeah. people at least. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, sir. Mm. Wow. Mm. So now, then N, <clears throat> N means a neighborhood link. Strong leaders recognize that they are part of the wider local community. And the company benefits from local talent, from local resources, and from local trade. Strong leaders invest in neighborhood schemes and expect their corporations to benefit the idea as a whole. And as a result, are seen as a community friend which is what you are already doing in Sierra Luna, mm -hmm. in, in Ghana, <coughs> starting with the church and all this. We are investing in all this neighborhood. So then G globally concerned, strong leaders take the broad view with a long-term perspective committed to responsible planning rather than short-termism. Mm -hmm. They drive sustainable businesses practices and aim to leave the world in a better state than it would have been otherwise. Now, Pastor Mana has just said that he is building the church for his, the leaders to take over. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's the, the, the church will terminate after him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. so, so business leaders cannot begin to foster a climate of positive order. If they are so concerned, it's making a profit. They must also have a vision that gives life meaning, that offers people hope for their own future and those of their children. What do they do to make it life better for themselves and for others? Mihaly Shashinsky is a professor of business. So, so that is uh, what we have read today. And then next week, by the grace of God, we're going to go <coughs> on to weak leadership in contrast to strong leadership. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that, so that uh, we'll be able to compare mm -hmm. those. Uh, and um, so, so what, what do we do to motivate our members in the church? Or because one thing is, we, we cannot say, because they don't come and they are still holding leadership position. We are not preparing for our, for our next 10 years. What, so, what, so what, what I'm going to